read where Darren Hardy interviewed the most successful people in the world, Howard Schultz, Oprah, Warren Buffett, Jeff Bezos, you name it. And he noticed they all had two things in common. Number one, they're committed to continual learning. And number two, they're committed to continual goal setting. Now think about those two success traits. By the way, I'm Terry Savelle Foy, your cheerleader of dreams, and I want to talk about both of those today. And then I want to give you the six common mistakes in setting your New Year's goals. This is going to help you so much in preparing for the new year. Oh, and for those of you who are wondering, yes, your download this week is my most popular course, the online vision board course. Normally $97 for only $8 again this week. Merry Christmas! <laughs> You know, we've had over 20,000 people from all over the world enroll in this course. But what's even better is the testimonies we get every single day of people checking off their goals and their dreams. So if you don't want to wait till the end of the video to hear about how to get the course, just click the link in the description right now and you will be able to get the entire course for only $8. That's six videos, it's the book, the ebook, or the ebook and the e workbook. Just click the link. Okay. Back to our topic. Successful people are committed to continual learning. John Maxwell was asked, he said, what's the number one predictor that you will be successful? Now think about that. The greatest predictor that you will be successful. Without hesitating, he responded, be intentional about your personal growth. Well, that's what you're doing when you enroll in like the vision board course or other courses. You're being very intentional about setting your goals the right way for the new year. Now, a lot of people have good intentions, but they're not intentional about their personal growth. What could you accomplish if you were very strategic about growing yourself in the new year? Reading, listening to audios, meeting with mentors, taking courses. You know, just to give you an example. I read recently where 80% of the millionaires in the United States in the past 20 years are immigrants and the number one ethnic group in the U.S. becoming millionaires are Russians and the number one reason why is an openness to learn. Then they found out the second trait they have is, the, is a do what it takes mindset. The third trait is a willingness to outwork others. Bottom line. If you want a remarkable life, you got to be willing to pay a remarkable price, right? And that requires three things. I'll go through these pretty quick. Number one is commit to reading. 88% of the wealthiest people in the world read 30 minutes or more every day, and only 2% of poor people do this. Now, T.D. Jake said, anytime someone says, I want to be successful, he says, great. Take me to your house and show me your library. He said, you can't grow anymore if you don't read anymore. And then he yells, you know, build your personal library. And of course he's shouting and sweating. <laughs> it sounds more powerful coming from T.D. Jakes. But don't let your books give you shelf help. Read them, right? So set a goal in the new year to read a certain number of books. Number two, they are committed to continual listening. 63% of the wealthiest people in the world listen to audios during their commute to work, and only 5% of poor people do. Now, this is a study I found on Entrepreneur Magazine. But turn your car into a classroom. They found out the average American tracks 12,000 miles per year in their car. That's just the average. That's the equivalent of spending 300 hours behind the wheel of your car. You know, we're stuck in traffic 38 to 68 hours a year. That's just stuck in traffic, just sitting there. What if you heard one million dollar idea during your commute? And hey, real quick, I wanna ask you if you would subscribe to our channel. You know, that's a simple step you can take right now to make sure you're committed to listening, to faith building, positive input consistently. So all you have to do is push the little play button and become a subscriber. And I wanna say thank you so much for doing that because I pray for my subscribers. I prayed for you this morning. Okay, so set a new goal to invest in some new audio books and utilize your drive time to grow yourself. Oh. And you'll, you'll learn all that kind of stuff in the vision board course. But I want to mention number three before I tell you the six common mistakes in goal setting. Number three is commit to investing in your growth. You know, I remember the first time I went online and I bought $60 in books and audio programs and I could not believe it. I thought 60 bucks on faith building resources. <laughs> 
Then I thought, I would easily spend $60 on clothing. This is my future we're talking about. Well, do you know the most valuable thing in my house is my books, my audios, all the programs I've invested in? Now, don't get me wrong, I have some amazing shoes. <laughs> but listen, just instead of just investing in this amazing pair of shoes or an outfit that's gonna be outdated, the books will live on forever, right? The books taught me how to get the amazing shoes. But you must invest in your personal growth. Here's the thing. Whoever has your ear has your life. Yes, this is an ear. But be very selective about who you allow to speak into your life. Get some mentors who are seven to 10 steps ahead of you. And you've probably heard the phrase that black belts don't learn new skills from white belts. Bottom line, make you and your growth a priority for the new year. They say the largest room in the world is the room for improvement, right? Okay, the second trait that Darren Hardy noticed of the most successful people is that they are committed to continual goal setting. Did you know the very act of sitting down and making a list of goals that you want to accomplish in this next year, it gets your blood pumping and your heart rate up, you become alert and excited, you feel good about yourself only when you're working towards something that's important to you. So real quick, I want to go through the six common mistakes in goal setting that I learned from Michael Hyatt. You ready? Okay, number one, you set too many goals. I used to set like 43 goals. Well, the top way people get, the top ways that people get, you know, lose their focus is by having too many goals to focus on. You've probably heard that phrase that man who chases two rabbits catches neither. Well, most of us are not only chasing about 10 rabbits, but a couple elephants too. <laughs> But research supports staying between seven to 10 goals. Of course, I'm gonna walk you through this whole process in the vision board course. Number two, the second mistake is you don't write your goals down. You know, Dr. Gail Matthews of Dominican University in California, she did research on goal setting and she wanted to know what was the impact of writing down your goals. I mean, do you really have to grab a pencil and write them down or can you mentally just leave them in your head? She discovered that the very act of writing them down gives you a 42% greater probability of achieving the goal, even if you don't do anything else. Isn't that amazing? See, you can just casually say, I'd like to have $10,000 in my savings account, but nothing happens or makes it a true focus until you write it down. Number three, you don't make your goals specific. You know, you may say, I'd really like to make more money but until you make it concrete, it's doubtful it will ever happen. In most cases, it's too broad. You know, you wanna increase your salary, how much? You wanna lose weight, how much? You wanna read more books, how many books? Be very specific. Okay, number four is you don't assign a deadline. Deadlines are motivating. They create a sense of urgency. You know, many people are afraid to set a deadline because they're concerned they won't make it. That's okay, you can move the deadline. If you have a desire to write a book, you need to assign a deadline for chapter one. Don't just say, I'm gonna write my book this year. Put a deadline after every goal. Okay, number five is you don't stretch yourself outside your comfort zone. You need to be uncomfortable. See, if all of your goals are in the comfort zone, it doesn't motivate you. It's not compelling. It doesn't require you to think creatively or to pray or to use your faith. Set a goal in the discomfort zone. That's where prayers are answered, where you can look back and say, oh my goodness, look what God has done. Now here's the thing about the discomfort zone. It's uncomfortable. You're gonna feel doubt, fear, awkward, but it just means you're being stretched. Doesn't the Bible say it's impossible to please God without faith? So it means you're gonna have to grow and use your faith to achieve these goals. Okay, number six is you don't make your goals visible. This was discovered as the biggest reason goals are not achieved. We stick them in a drawer, a nightstand, on a computer. We never go back and look at them. That used to be me. Well, they say keep your goals out of reach, but never out of sight. So again, that's why I'm offering my vision board course this week. Every day, you just take two minutes to look at your goals, to speak to them, to thank God in advance. It's that easy. So don't miss your opportunity to get this best-selling course this week. It's normally $97 for only $8. Just click the link in the description and you will start the year more focused and ready than ever before. 
Merry Christmas, and I'll be cheering you on to live your dreams. channel and to get more inspirational content click one of these videos right here and remember I'm cheering you on to live your dreams.